I am in Xinjiang in West China, the most controversial region of the country and in this video we will get impressions of this Uyghur autonomous region which is all over western media for not so good reasons. According to the media the Uyghur Muslim people here are being oppressed and they can't practice their Muslim religion. Let's see what the life is really like here. Try local food, meet local Uyghur people, see if we can find any mosques. But is this region even safe to visit as a foreigner? This is the first time I feel a bit unsafe in China to be honest. And I also want to see how different is this region compared to the rest of China that I have visited in the past weeks. Let's find out. Feel free to join. Okay, sure, sure. thank you very much. Okay, and we are in the city center of Urumqi. There is a bazaar here, slash market, which I think is a good start to explore a new city. But as you can see, it's snowing. It snowed a lot in the morning and it is freezing cold here, about minus 17 degrees. Oh, this exit. Entrance over there? Yeah? Okay, thank you. Let's get some first impressions. And the first thing I see here is a big mosque. So that is obviously a big... Oh, I almost slipped there. Oh, <laughs> need to be careful here. Very slippery. Where was I? Um, yeah, the mosque here. But uh, let me actually go through the security here first. Urinji. Again? Urinji. <laughs> Urinji? What is Urinji? Drone. I have a drone. Yeah, I need to get it out. <laughs> Okay, seems like my drone is a problem again. Not the first time this happens in China. Drone? Drone can stay here? Okay, I think the drone needs to stay here. Passport. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah, I had this before at uh, Forbidden City in uh, Beijing. But I was not allowed to take my drone into the area. And then I take a picture of the passport and then I can pick it up later. So I guess that's going to happen here as well. Oh, did you hear that? Her language is not Mandarin Chinese. She's speaking Uyghur language, I assume. Okay, she used the translator. I'll pick it up later. Thank you. Okay. All right, the drone stays here. Oh, careful now because it's slippery here. But here we are. This is the bazaar in the city center. Let's see what we can find here. I'm also pretty hungry, to be honest. And yeah, check it out. We have a mosque here, which I think is maybe the first time I see a mosque in China. It's obviously there are also mosques in other cities. I'm pretty sure you can find them in Beijing and Shanghai as well. But I think I haven't seen a mosque yet in China. Oh, I have the feeling already this is a culturally very interesting place. So I'm very looking forward to the rest of the day here. Okay, guys, it is very cold. I'm going to put on my mask. And every time I'm wearing a mask uh, in a video, in recent videos, I did wear the mask as well. There were always some people in the comments telling me, oh, why are you still wearing a mask? COVID is over. Well, this mask is obviously not for COVID reasons. I'm wearing it because it's freezing cold here. And yeah, people cleaning the streets here because yeah, it was literally snowing all morning today. And yeah, something that I notice already everywhere here is that all the signs, not only on the stores, also on the roads, have this writing on it. So not only Chinese writing, as you can see here, usually it's both writing. So this one and then this one right here, which actually to me looks like it's Arabic writing, at least very similar, but I assume it's the Uyghur language actually and I heard some people talking already and it was clearly not Mandarin so many people also speak Uyghur language here maybe later we will hear it more clearly so I can show it to you in the video as well but yeah all the shops here have the, the writing not only in Mandarin but also in yeah, what looks to me similar to Arabic I'm not sure how similar it is if you have some knowledge about that feel free to share it in the comments this looks like an interesting drink stall here I think they are having drinks here not sure what it is Hello. Ni hao. Is this something to drink? Chai. Chai? Tea. 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 Okay, can I get one? Oh, difficult to order here. Oh, that looks very interesting. I like the, the pots here. Ah, maybe it's a milk tea. It looks like a milky tea. Milk tea? Yeah? Oh, oh that looks like a big portion. And all of this you put inside? Uh, what is this? Uh, dates? I think these are dates. Uh, okay. So we have different ingredients here. Yes. Okay. How much you get? Sure. 
Shi uh. I need I need to learn the numbers in Chinese. <laughs> so how much do I type in here? You can type in the amount. Let's see how much I have to pay. 15, okay, okay. She could have typed in any amount now. But I think 15 is the fair and honest price. Okay, Shishi, do you speak Mandarin? Do you speak Chinese? Uyghur? You speak Uyghur language? Oh, you? China. <laughs> okay, okay, Shishi, thank you. Okay, the communication was uh, not the best, which is totally fine, but I didn't really understand them. Anyway, they gave me a little uh, very thin... Oh no, it's not a straw, it's just to stir it, I think. Ah, but this one? Put inside here? Okay, maybe you do it like this. Stir it a little bit. Okay, it's actually quite a big one. I hope it tastes good. Let's give it a try. Mm. Oh, it's very flavorful. It's very milky. So it's, uh, I would describe it as a milk tea. Very different from the teas I tried previously in China. It's not a typical Chinese tea and it's hot, which is obviously great for this weather. Mm. And also the, the ingredients that she put inside, you can actually eat them. So I have something to chew as well, not only to drink. And you see the amount of uh, people here cleaning the streets, like uh, getting rid of all the snow. That is insane. They are everywhere here. Oh, but I gotta say, I'm without gloves now. This is not handable. My hands are freezing literally after like one or two minutes without the gloves. Yeah, minus 17 degrees is absolutely no joke. Also, I'm wearing several layers of clothes now, including uh, two pants, two t-shirts, a thick sweatshirt. Two socks. Okay, I see people taking a picture next to what looks like a cookie to me. So maybe this cookie is actually famous here. And I think this store is selling that. Let's see if we can find out what the hype is about. Mm, it smells very good in here. And to be honest, it looks more like a, like a bread. Like a flat bread, similar to a naan bread, for example. And what is this? Is this a bread museum here? So we have all these breads on the wall here. That is interesting. Uh, we have it in English here, nang. So maybe that's the name. It sounds similar like Nan actually. In various shapes, use dough to make different shapes of Nang. With unique shape designs such as Nang with grape shade, Nang with bird shape and Nang with fish shape. Okay, so here we have the wall of Nang bread with different shapes. I'm wondering if I can actually buy it here. Now I'm curious to try it. I think they use these ovens here, which look similar like a tandoori oven. Here they actually make it. Yeah, you can see it. The bread is inside the oven here. And now I'm very curious to buy it. Excuse me, do you speak English? Uh, uh, English? A little. Yeah. A little. Yeah. Where can I... I want to buy the bread. You mean you want to buy this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Where can I buy it? Uh, I asked it for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, so helpful. She's asking where I can buy it now. Downstairs. Downstairs? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Ah, okay, so here we have a section where I can actually buy it. Five yuan seems to be the price. And then we have the bigger ones here with sesame on top. Oh, I think these ones are fresh. Can I get one? One. Yeah? Let's put it in here. Okay, Shishi, thank you. Okay, everyone took a picture in front of this. And now I bought one of these. Ooh, it is so warm, that is nice. I just want to touch it to keep my hands warm. Okay, let's see what the hype is about. Oh, oh, actually there's something inside, you see it? It looks like a pepper or maybe even chili. Oh, this is delicious. How chill. Very similar to a naan bread, which you can get in South Asia or Malaysia, for example. But I would say this one is a bit more crispy on the outside. You can see the outside parts here are a bit crispy. But then from the inside, it's actually very fluffy. Light and fluffy. You see the red peppers in here. They add a strong flavor to it, you know. Oh, but now my butt is freezing sitting here in the cold. I need to continue moving. That keeps me warm. This one is very good. Okay, I think this is some kind of inside area of the market. Let's have a look. We have these huge doors here to keep the cold out. Interesting. Saw so similar doors in Harbin. Oh, and this looks like an indoor market here. Oh, which is actually nice. Not as cold in here. But yeah, I also assume that people don't see many Western tourists here. Not many people make it to this region of China. Even many Chinese people never make it to this region of China. Ni hao, hello. Ni hao. Hello. Is this uh, candy? Mm. Uh, something sweet? Si. To eat? Si. Ah. Si. Oh, this actually looks... I can try? 
Oh, I think he was offering me to try. Oh, I can sure, try? Sure, sure. Just eat? Okay, let's see what it is. A little bit gluey, similar to a chewing gum. Mm, there's a milky taste to it. What is the name of this? Uh, maybe I need my translator. Oh, actually, it's quite good. Not, a, not very sweet, just a milky flavor to it. Mm. Well, I think he wants to sell it. So I'm putting my translator now from English to Uyghur language. What is it made from? And see, I get this writing as well. Let's see if you can read it. <laughs> uh, you don't understand this? Maybe he speaks Chinese. Let me try in Chinese. What is it made of? I think it's made of and not made from. Let's see if you can read Mandarin. You. Ah, you buffalo. I think this is buffalo. Uh, is it buffalo milk? Again? Oh, that doesn't work. But I think it's milk. Can I buy a small portion? Okay. Okay. I think that means okay. Let's see how much I will get. Okay. 38? Okay. I can pay with Jifu Bao. Okay, also in this part of China, you can pay everywhere with your phone. All right, actually that was really delicious and not really that sweet, like a milky dessert. And yeah, you guys know I'm always happy to try new things. And this was actually pretty good. But yeah, this market has definitely different vibes compared to markets I have been in China previously. Like the, the things that are sold here, they look different. The, the clothings that are sold here, they look different. It really reminds me about markets in the Middle East, like Turkey, Egypt, this region, where I have been before I was making YouTube videos. But yeah, overall, I have to say, I have a little bit the feeling of being in a different country. The vibes here are very different. The language seems to be a bit different. The food looks different. So overall, it feels a bit like I'm not in China anymore. I'm getting more like Middle Eastern hello. slash Central Asia vibes. Hello. Ni hao. Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting more like Central Asia slash Middle Eastern vibes here, which is very interesting. Oh, but we also have these snacks here. Yeah, I tried these before. Maybe you remember my video from Harbin or in Shanghai. So these snacks, it's like uh, fruit and there's like sugar. It's coated with sugar. And this seems to be popular all over China. I saw that in every place I've been to in China. Let's see if we can actually visit the mosque. Maybe it's possible to go inside as a tourist. That would be interesting. Okay, so this is the mosque here, basically in the center of the whole market area here. Ah, the entrance is uh, hidden behind the, the stores here. That's why I haven't seen it earlier. Wait, is this the entrance to the mosque? Nah, this looks more like shops in there. Maybe I'm wrong and this is not even a mosque. Then excuse me for that. Yeah, this is definitely not the entrance to a mosque here. Oh, this looks like the... What is the English word? Aladdin's Wunderlampe in German. From the Disney uh, character Aladdin. He can uh, rub the lamp and then there's a ghost coming out, right? There are many uh, Middle Eastern influenced uh, items here to purchase. Well, I think actually I was wrong. This is not a mosque. This is just a market that looks like a mosque to me. But I know that there are definitely mosques around here, so... Let's see if we can find another mosque that I can visit. Because that would be very interesting, to be honest. This clearly looks like a mosque, right? But it's just a market hall inside. Let me know in the comments if you also thought this is a mosque. So I'm not the only one who thought that. Whew, the snow is getting stronger and so does the wind. Oh, and the wind is freezing cold. But I think I can actually visit this tower here, go up, check out a scenic view. Let's see how much I have to pay. I see a 30 here. So probably this is the price to go up. Let's have a look. Hello. Ni hao. I can go up the tower. 30 yuan. Only WeChat. May our WeChat. Let's pay with cash. As usual in China, when you have cash, they don't have change here, so she has to look for change. To this date, I have never seen someone paying cash in China. I spent now, I think, more than four weeks in total in China, and I've never seen someone paying cash. That is crazy, right? You know, sometimes it happens that they only accept WeChat and not Alipay. So I can pay with Alipay with the Alipay app, but I can't pay with the WeChat app. And she's back without change. They're not prepared for that. Go here? Okay, thank you very much. And the designs here that look so much like Middle Eastern to me, not like China anymore. We have camels here on the wall. And all the paintings here. 
Oh, there's a wolf. Yeah, this city, by the way, is also along the Silk Road. And I think some of the paintings here tell the history of the Silk Road. Yeah, the Silk Road once used to be the biggest trade route of the world, going all the way from, I think it started in Beijing actually, and then going all the way to the Middle East, to Europe even. And there were several cities along the Silk Road. And this one used to be one of them. So people from Europe came to Asia to trade goods and then bring them back to Europe or wherever their home country was. So all the cities along the Silk Road used to be very popular, big cities, rich cities usually. Okay, so they really made a museum out of the tower here. So all along the stairs here, you have these paintings, you have some items for display, and you have some rooms that you can go into and have a look. That looks nice here. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. All right, and we do have a 360 degree view all around. This, by the way, is actually a quite a large city. Almost 4 million people are living here, which is not that big for Chinese standards, but this will be the biggest city in Germany where I'm from. To be honest, I have to say the, the language that the gentleman next to me is speaking, which I guess is the Uyghur language, it sounds actually very similar to Turkish to me. Do you speak English? No English. <laughs> where are you from? City name. Okay, okay. And here we are getting some more Middle Eastern vibes. We have the camels here. We have the, the lambs here. I'm actually not sure what's the right English word for this. But it's either a lamp, like from Aladdin, or this is actually like a, like a teapot. Oh, and check this out. There's a police car in front of me with heavily armed guards. I don't want to point my camera straight towards them, but you can maybe see it on the, on the right screen now. The heavily armed military behind me. Um, that's actually something new that I haven't seen before in China. Usually you see a lot of security or policemen, that's normal in China, but this is actually my first time seeing heavily armed uh, military guys in China. So that makes me think there must be a reason for that here. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can get my drone back. Hello. I want to get my drone. <coughs> Nihao, hello. Ah, I need to sign it here. Ah, okay. Okay, just like that. I do have my drone back. And I want to go to a different area now because I'm actually curious to uh, visit a mosque. And I know that there is a mosque around here. I just checked on the on the map. So let's see if we can visit a mosque here. And oh, also here now. Uh, heavily armed military guys that were not here when I arrived here. So you can see that the guys standing on top of the vehicle, they carry heavy machine guns. Oh, to be honest, it makes me feel a bit unsafe here now. I mean, there must be a reason why suddenly there are heavily armed guards here. Well, this is the first time I feel a bit unsafe in China, to be honest. I know these guys are here to, to make everything safer. So actually I should feel safer, not more unsafe, but you know, like suddenly there are some heavily armed guards popping up. There must be a reason for it, right? Whew, I almost slipped here. Well, you need to be very careful with your steps here. I'm wondering why they don't put salt on the road. That's what we do in Germany when the roads are slippery. Then the, the people employed by the city, they go around and put salt everywhere. And the salt makes the, the ice and the snow melt. But it seems like that's not the case here in China. Anyway, what I wanted to say is that so the area we just visited around the bazaar looked like a tourist area to me, like a typical tourist area, like all the, the shops that were there. So I'm actually wondering who are the tourists that come here? Definitely no Western tourists, but I thought that also this city is not that popular for Chinese tourists, especially not in the winter when it's freezing cold here. I think together with Harbin, or the area around Harbin, this is probably the coldest area in China right now. So I'm wondering, where are the tourists coming from? Ah! <laughs> She's standing on top of the snow mountain here. <laughs> and the building over there looks interesting actually, I'm not sure what it is. But uh, you see all the, the shapes here of the buildings, everything looks typical Middle, Middle Eastern style, right? Such an interesting city, I have to say. 
totally different vibes here than in the other Chinese cities I have visited. I think I said it already earlier in the video, it looks more like a different country or it feels a bit like I am in a different country now. And also there, another vehicle with armed guards on top of it. Yeah, also here, I saw that in basically every Chinese city already that all the popular places, the tourist places, they are all with security checks like this. So you always have to go through a metal detector. And I remember when I was in Beijing, on top of that, you also have to show your passport everywhere. Oh, I'm curious what's going on here. Maybe this is another market area here. Good marketing. The drums and the music outside, they are attracting the people. And then I was curious to see what's actually going on inside here. But it looks like a, yeah, like a mall. Okay, I think I just did a mistake. Uh, I just uh, switched the batteries of my camera and uh, my second battery is almost empty. So now I have the empty first battery and I have the empty second battery. And on top of that, I forgot the charging cable for my power bank. So I'm literally out of battery now. I think I have like 5% of battery left. That means I either need to buy a charging cable to charge the camera with my power bank, or I need to go back to my hotel and I may return tomorrow. Like you can rent power banks everywhere here in China, but I can't do that. It's not working. I don't have the right app to do that. I tried this before. So these power banks, they have a charging cable as well. So I had to go back to my hotel and then it was already quite late. So the next day now, but I am back in the area where I have been yesterday already. So the bazaar where we explored earlier in the video is right over there behind the building. And today, as you can see, most of the snow has been removed, but it is actually colder than yesterday. Currently we have minus 21 degrees, but at least there's no more snow here. But it is still very slippery here. So I slipped already, almost slipped already a few times. And yeah, yesterday I explored already a bit around the area off camera. And I saw some interesting places right over there. So let's check it out. A lot of the shops here are playing music as a marketing strategy. And yeah, you can hear the music. I can't play too much of the music because it's copyrighted. But you can definitely hear that it's not typical Chinese music. And this building right here also looks like a mosque to me. But I think it's closed. Yeah, I don't think it's open. Nobody in here. It is a Sunday afternoon, by the way. Maybe that's not the right time to visit the mosque, but I will not give up. And I actually think it's pretty interesting to just have a walk around here, get some impressions, feel the vibes, feel the atmosphere, you know? And I really can say this feels very different compared to all the other cities I have visited in China. And you know what's always funny? No matter which country I visit, you always recognize barber shops by this uh, spinning light outside. And wow, look at all the smoke coming out here. I'm wondering what I have on the grill here. Oh wow, check it out. Oh, and I see some meat sticks right here. Not sure what it is. Looks pretty dark, maybe like liver or something like that. Hello, can I get meat here? Is this lamb? Hey. Yeah? Mm. Okay, can I, how much is one? How much? Oh, sure. I don't understand. Yeah. One, two. Okay, can I get one? This one, yeah, this looks delicious. Okay, okay, I go inside? Okay. Yeah, usually I wouldn't buy meat that uh, is lying around on the street like this for who knows how long, but because the temperature out here is as cold as a freezer, I think it's okay. Oh. Hello. Can I sit? Okay. Oh, check it out. That looks amazing. Hello. Nice to meet you. Yeah. So it looks like they're making it very fresh here. Oh, actually, I would like to get the bread as well. I can sit here? Ah. Can I get the bread as well? Uh, this one, the bread? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm getting a lot of looks here. I feel like people are not used to see a Western foreigner in here. Oh, there's one lady over there, she's looking at me. I can't really tell if she's uh, angry or just curious. 
Oh, well, now she's smiling. Okay, everything seems to be good. You have something for me? Sure. Nadi, Nadi. I'm from Germany. Huh? Germany. 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 Yes. Oh yeah, tea. Right. Okay. But it looks like I'm uh, drinking tea from a bowl here. Oh, what is what is he doing? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I don't understand. English. English, yeah. You speak English? No English. Okay. <laughs> okay, and the food has arrived. And first impression, it smells really, really delicious. So this is the stick that I just chewed outside. So they uh, grilled it in the room over there. So it's coming fresh from the grill. And then I have this bread as well, which also reminds me about a naan bread. So it's probably similar. And then you have a tea on the side. And the tea is actually very delicious. It's a typical black tea. Not that sweet, to be honest. Some countries, they like to drink black tea very sweet. But this is, I would say, the perfect amount of sugar inside. A little bit, but not too much. And now let me take a quick picture for Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram yet, feel free to do so. Can abroad on Instagram. The bread actually is not hot. It's uh, slightly warm. I would say similar to naan but not the same. A bit similar to the one I had earlier today already. Okay, so this is a proper meat stick right here. Lamb meat. Let's give it a try. Oh, I love the flavor of the meat. The flavors, the spices they put around is very delicious. And in combination with the bread together, that is delicious. Oh, I'm a meat lover, so this is heaven for me right now. The meat is so good. And I'm a big fan of Middle Eastern meat dishes. And everything here, the flavors, the meat, reminds me a lot about typical Middle Eastern dishes. It's not spicy at all, if you're wondering. No spicy flavors in here. It's a bit similar to curry flavor, I would say. Wow, that was one of the best pieces of meat I ate in a long time. That was outstandingly good. Let's see how much I have to pay for this. That was very delicious. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, how much? 20? Yeah, 20 yuan for a very delicious meal here. I don't know what you mean. I don't understand. <laughs> but it was a hautje. Hautje. Delicious. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Nice to meet you. Okay, have a good day. Bye-bye. Oh, friendly people here. And this is where the bread is made. I think they steam the bread in here. Kind of steaming here. Ah, oh, this is... Oh, oh. Oh, delicious. Delicious. Okay, okay. That looks good. I think it's probably in the top five best meals I ate all over China. But yeah, I still would like to see a mosque. And while I was eating, I had a look on Google Maps. And although Google Maps is not that reliable here in China, but I saw some mosques that are in the area here. Actually, there are quite a few, to be honest. Oh, check this out. This looks delicious here. Some more bread. Hello. What is this one? Is it, is it bread? Bread? Hot? Hot? Okay, can I get one piece, please? One piece? One piece? I'm not sure if it's bread or if there's a filling inside, but uh, walking by here and it just smells delicious, so I'm curious to try it. Maybe she means one piece for three yuan. I'm really curious if there's a filling inside or if it's just plain bread. Uh, something inside? Okay, no problem. <laughs> I'm gonna find out. Okay, thank you very much. Cheers. Oh, this is steaming hot here. This looks delicious. But yeah, let's find out if there's a filling inside or not. Mm. Oh, there's meat inside. I think it's beef and onions in here. So it's almost like a dumpling. So maybe this is the Xinjiang style of a dumpling. But the outside, usually a dumpling has like this, the outside part is almost like a noodle. And here it's more like a bread. So it's a hot filled bread with meat. Very good. I think there are also fatty parts inside. And they are very juicy, very delicious, very flavorful. And there's fat squeezing out. Oh, he even brought me some tissues. Tissue, oh. thank you. Oh, he saw the, the fat is squeezing out, so he brought me some tissues. I make a video. Oh. <laughs> okay, these were two amazing, good food experiences here. Thank you, Tissue. Bye bye. Wow. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a meat lover. I love to eat meat. It seems like they really know how to cook meat here. 
which actually is the case all over China. I really love the way Chinese people cook their meat, like all these braised dishes, braised pork, braised beef. So it seems like also in this part of China, they really know how to prepare meat. And this, by the way, looks like a mosque, right? And all my hands are dying. This is not a joke anymore. I need to put you guys down on the floor. Because I need to get my, my gloves out. I even feel like that these gloves might be not thick enough for the weather conditions here. I mean, the cloth, these gloves are totally fine when it was like around zero degrees, like it was in Chiang, where I'm coming from. But here it feels like I need thicker gloves. And this also looks closed. Maybe all the mosques are closed today. Check it out, there's even a little market here, basically right at the traffic light. And everything is happening outside here. That really surprises me. People here seem to be very um, used to the cold. Nihao, what is this? Fruits? Shingil. Shingil? Yeah, shingil. Shida. I can eat. Oh, I'm not sure what it is. Maybe a dried date? Can eat. Ah. How do you eat this? It's, <laughs> it's hard like a rock. Mm. Obviously it's freezing cold here. So this is frozen. Mm. It's sweet. Not sure what it is. I think it's some kind of dried fruit. Okay, shishi. Thank you. Not my favorite fruit. <laughs> and it's very, very difficult to eat. And by the way, there's another mosque right over there. Okay, this is a... Uh, Bit of a sad situation. There's a woman behind me with her, I think her son and uh, maybe her brother or her husband. And uh, I think she's asking for money and she's crying, which uh, is kind of sad walking by there. So I'm not sure what she's asking for, but she seems to be very desperate. Okay. Okay. Have a good day. This, by the way, was the first time I saw someone in China on the streets asking for money. And this after, I think this is my fifth week in total now here in China. I'm getting a bit of Southeast Asian vibes here, to be honest. And it's crazy that we have outdoor markets here in this freezing temperature. And I have to say, a lot of the clothing here remind me once again about uh, Middle Eastern clothing. Yeah, I feel almost like I'm on a market in the Middle East. Egypt or Turkey. These styles here doesn't really look typical Chinese, right? Hello. Oh, I can't read that. <laughs> I can't read Chinese. <laughs> well, I think there was a promotion for a restaurant. Wow, it's so interesting to just uh, walk around and get impressions here because it's, yeah, once again, it's so different compared to the rest of China where I have been to. Something that I also notice here is that the different ethnic groups, so you have the ethnic Chinese people here, you have the Uyghur Muslim people here. It seems like they are living peacefully together. Like you see many restaurants where you have different ethnicity groups sitting inside, eating together. I even saw some mixed couples walking around here. So my impression, the people here, despite being from different ethnic groups, seem to live peacefully together here. And that is actually quite nice to see. And also something that I would like to mention is this is now, I think, the sixth city I visit in China. Shanghai, Guangzhou, Beijing, Harbin, Chiang, and now Urumqi. And I have to say, every city I have been to looks modern, looks clean, seem to be well organized. You don't see trash, you don't see homeless people. Until this day, I haven't seen one single homeless person anywhere in China. And yeah, I often get comments on my Chinese videos from Westerners. They are so surprised, oh, China is so clean, so developed. Nothing like I am told in the Western media, so people are saying this in the comments a lot. So also here in the far west of China, the city looks like this. Very modern, clean, decent well organized and that is just one example of how wrong the reports in the western media seem to be about china i'm from germany 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 yeah netherlands. from the netherlands uh -huh. oh almost neighbors yeah we are neighbors. oh what are you doing here huh? i am family visit. your family here yeah oh yeah. oh nice I don't see many Western tourists here. I, I also. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're the first one, actually. Yeah, me also. Not that many people travel here. Yeah, right. That's what I like about places like this because it's off the beaten path and no Westerners coming here. Yeah, that is a, that is yeah. a place to be. Eh? That makes it interesting for me. That is. Uh, that is right, right. Bye bye. Okay, enjoy. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> ah. 
a man from the Netherlands who has family here. So I am not the only Western person in town at the moment. But yeah, as he said as well, I'm the first one that he sees. And uh, he's the first one that I see. Anyway, there's another mosque right here, which yeah, I think is now the third or the fourth mosque I come across just by walking around the city center here. So you can't say that there are no mosques here or that the Chinese government is trying to remove the mosque or something like that. But also this one seems to be closed today, which is uh, sad because I would really be curious to see one of these mosques from the inside. Maybe Sunday is just a day where all the mosques are closed, but I'm not giving up. There's uh, another mosque nearby according to Google Maps. So let's see if I'm lucky there. Oh, and walking through the smoke here, coming out of the steamer over there. I'm actually surprised by how many things are being sold like basically on the streets you know like everywhere you see these uh, shops having something on display outside of the stores like all the food and then the market vendors selling like fruits or some clothing and yeah keep in mind it is absolutely freezing cold here huh? so this is something that surprises me how much is actually going on on the streets okay so i walked quite far away from the city center maybe like half an hour 40 minute walk from the bazaar area so this seems to be a very local neighborhood here just to get some impressions like outside of the this touristy city center if you know my channel then you know that's what i like to do usually but also here the impressions are basically the same most of the places are muslim places you see more halal restaurants than you see non-halal typical chinese restaurants so i have the impression that most of the city is looking like this and also here there's another mosque right over there there seem to be quite a lot of mosques here is that right yes yeah, right? yes yes yeah, right? but today they are all closed mm. <laughs> because today is the uh, because today is the weekend ah. not open on the weekend mm. ah, yeah, i think the weekend is the problem the Close. mosque has already closed mm. so yes, this is a yes. mosque but it's not open no open. Okay, okay. Walk one kilometer forward to find the mosque. Over there and then right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. She was friendly and lovely, right? And yeah, she confirmed what I thought already or what is my impression already that there are quite a lot of mosques around here. Okay, this is no joke. I literally can't feel my hand anymore. This is crazy. I've never felt this cold before. So I need to warm up oh, very badly. Oh, this is crazy. Whew. I just uh, took off my gloves outside to take some pictures, literally just for half a minute or so. And now it literally feels like my hand is about to, to totally freeze. Oh, this is insane. By the way, interesting fact about uh, the mosque here in this region of China. I read before, so I don't know if this is a, an actual fact, just something that I read before. I read that Xinjiang, so this region of China, has more mosques than the US, more mosques than any Western country in Europe. And then, you know, all the Western medias are always saying that the Muslims being oppressed here, that China is trying to, or the Chinese government is trying to remove the Muslim culture. But then there are more mosques here than in the US or in Western Europe. And also, do you have the impression so far that the, so the majority of people that we spoke to today, we interacted with, we saw were Muslims and I almost slipped again. And yet the Western media is trying to tell us that the Muslims are being oppressed here by the Chinese government, that they don't live a normal life or they can't have a normal life. So I don't want to judge now, but just asking you, what is your impression of the people that we have seen so far today? Do they seem to be oppressed? Do they seem to not have a normal life here? You can judge that for yourself. Just a few days ago, I read a report in the German media about this region. And the media in Germany is demanding that Volkswagen, one of the biggest car brands in Germany, should close all their factories here in Xinjiang. Volkswagen is quite big here. They have factories here in Xinjiang. And oh, there's a Volkswagen right here, by the way. And I saw many Volkswagen. And yeah, the media in Germany currently demands that Volkswagen closes all their factories here because apparently there is forced Riga labor happening in the Volkswagen factories here. So the whole article is written as if it's a fact that there is forced labor happening in the Volkswagen factories. Now, obviously that is a big accusation. So what they did actually, they sent an investigation team to the Volkswagen factories here in Xinjiang, trying to find out if that's true or not. 
And yeah, it's a long article. The whole article is written in a way like it's a fact that this is happening. And then basically the last sentence of the report says that the investigation team that was sent here came to the conclusion that there is no sign of forced labor happening in the Volkswagen factories. But yeah, that is just a small sentence at the very end. So that is how the Western media is reporting about this region. Now, I am not here to judge what is wrong, what is right. I'm here to collect impressions and to share these impressions with you. So judge for yourself. And if you want, feel free to share your opinions in the comments, but please be respectful because it is a sensitive topic. And I would be especially curious to read your thoughts if you are a Muslim living in China. How is it to live here as a Muslim? How are you being treated? If you would like to, feel free to share your thoughts. And here we have another mosque, which I think is also the mosque that the, the lady in the shop recommended. Excuse me, can I go inside? I want to go inside? No. Ah, here? Ah, okay, thank you. Hello. Okay, let's see if this is actually a mosque. Clearly looks like a mosque but I'm confused by the, the shops down here, to be honest. Usually, or at least I have never seen that before, that the mosque has shops attached to it, you know? No, can I? Okay, I think all the mosques are closed today. But uh, I think you get the point that I try to uh, bring across in this video, that there are plenty of mosques around here. And although we can't visit them from the inside today, we have seen many mosque now from the outside here and yeah this was also the building that you saw at the very beginning of this video in the intro so this is where the circle closes and if you haven't seen my previous video where i explored around a rural area near chiang china then feel free to check out the video right here stay healthy stay positive and then see you on the next episode ciao guys